Welcome to Nerd Cage Fight Critiques. Fight. This is where the Nerd Cage crew and an expert martial artist break down various fights across cinema. So, time to gear up. Take it away, kids. <laughs> Finish him. That's right. This is volume two of Nerd Cage Fight Critiques. What a show we got for you. We have four fight scenes to break down, but before we get to that, Mark Withers, please read introduce once again our earth realm champion who's going to chop up these fights with us what's up everybody super excited to be here as usual and yes tonight's guest needs absolutely no introduction he's been my friend and my instructor for many years now but he's perhaps best known as sub-zero scorpion and many others from the mortal kombat franchise ladies and gentlemen please welcome master daniel piscina how are you doing tonight sir good my friends Thanks for having me back. It's been a tough year, right? Absolutely, it has. <laughs> so Master Piscina, we have a lot of scenes to get through today. I know we wanna get your take on the realism and the actual techniques that they're using and all that. Before we even get into that, please tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, martial art master Daniel Piscina did some stunts for a movie called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well as a couple other small movie projects, best known for Mortal Kombat. I got a chance to put the Lin Kuei into Mortal Kombat, gave Scorpion his weapon, made Ed and, uh, well, actually John, redesign the character into the Chinese Ninja Lin Kuei, you know, for the look and the mystique, because I thought it was a better thing. But uh, yeah, I've been practicing martial arts since 1969, still to this day, still practicing, trying to hit it. I'm honored to be on your channel again. Yeah, can't wait to take a look at these uh, action films. And I really enjoy, so everybody knows, I really enjoy action movies. I will pay money to see a bad action movie, even if I hear it's going to be bad. I will still pay money to do that because I think we should all support, you know, as the martial artists, we should support that. Absolutely. Very well said. So the scenes we have today, we are going to have Master Piscina critique fights from Yip Man 3, Jackie Chan's Project A, and a surprise fight. You guys are going to love it. And it's only appropriate that he also breaks down the fights between Scorpion and Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 2021. Yeah, so get over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donnie Yen is one of my favorite martial artists on screen. I've been a fan of his for a great number of years. And this fight in particular pairs him against Max Zhang, who we recently reviewed in the Master Z spin-off film. And I really enjoyed that as well. So I, this is actually one of my favorite on-screen fights in terms of Donnie Yen's uh, usage of Wing Chun. So I wanted to get Master Piscina's take on that. Fight. Right there, stop. Pull it back. Right there, stop. Before he thrusts. My question for everybody out there, does Max Zhang really know martial arts? Before he thrusts, his hand looks a little awkward because I, I pay attention to hand position because usually, you know, you have to hold it. So if I see a guy with the broken, like hold their wrist like this broken, I'm automatically like, oh, they don't really practice martial art for martial art. They kind of, maybe they do it for show or maybe they really don't know it. So before that first thrust, when he had the hand out and he had the blade here, his free hand looked really, really awkward. And if you train for a while, there's no way your hand would ever be awkward because, you know, when you're using it, even like sparring, you would hurt it. If you've already have that habit of not holding your hand like that. Again, I am a fan and I love this fight scene. I actually watched both of them several times. So let's continue from there. He looks good with that one. He looks good with that when the other one is okay. This one too, holding his hand more like a leaf hand rather than a traditional, you know, kind of Wing Chun type of hand. Finger thrusts don't look like he ever used a finger thrust in his life. You know what I mean? Your hand is like this, finger thrust like this, so that way you, you can take it. If it's flecked like this, I won't do it hard. Your, your fingers jump back. So that's another habit. See how Donnie Yen holds his hand like that? Because he used a finger thrust before. So that's why I'm like, maybe he didn't study that long, maybe, maybe. But he does a really good job with this. This is awesome. You you see things that most people probably don't. So I'm, I'm loving right. it. Right. Yeah, I'm a martial art geek. And even to this day, I, I still kind of, you know, get on different 
social media and take a look at martial artists out there and seeing what they're doing, you know, how the martial arts are progressing. That up the stairs and down the stairs, that's that's good fight choreography right there. Nice. Do you see a lot of different trends? Well, for the mainstream, like for the movies that Marvel does and, and Warner Brothers does, they use more of a brawling and tricking type of trend, which is really cool for a while. But after a while, it's like, oh, you're doing the same thing. And for me, I, st I still like to dive into it. But uh, with the fight scenes, I don't really pay attention to martial art strictness from that. You know what I mean? There, his elbows yeah. flaring a couple times when he's doing it. It was trained in Wing Chun. You hold the elbows in tight. So it was a nice hit. His wrist was proper. Got a good punch in. Let's play it again. All right. Yeah. This is great feedback. See, yeah, no, this is great. Yeah. yeah, I'm a fan of the, even though I like this fight scene, I'm a fan when the fan of when the fight scene is a little bit longer so it shows real skill as opposed yeah. to a lot of choppiness. Yeah, his first punch, his wrist was flexed a little awkwardly. But that little fight choreography is pretty good because that's a, that's a long string. Even though it was basic, it was pretty good. That's a cool exchange of how to get him back on the floor. So that's pretty good. Even though the Chi Sao sticking hand is more for training, you know, sticking yeah. in a movie is really, really cool. You know, give, they've used it a couple times in the spike yeah. too. Yeah, so that way it kind of, you know, it shows that they're trying to do, you know, that they are doing Wing Chun, they're representing Wing Chun. The Bruce Lee one-inch punch, love it. Yes. <laughs> I knew I saw that from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of that. That's really cool because, you know, giving tribute to that because it is it, man. So, yeah, so yeah. Sifu, what would you give this as far as a rating from one to 10? I would give it an overall eight. Outstanding. Eight. It's well done. I like the cinematography. I like that they basically all around, they stuck with the style of Wing Chun, both of them fighting basically Wing Chun style. They had one one clip where they fought, they exchanged blows for a, a longer period of time. So they deserve credit for that because that is difficult to kind of do. Overall an eight and I would watch that fight scene again. Awesome. So our next fight that we're gonna have Master Christina critique is from my favorite actor and action star of all time, Jackie Chan, and one of his best movies he ever did with his fellow martial artists, Sammo Hung and Yun Bao. I'm talking about Jackie Chan's Project A. And the fight that I pick is a fight I don't think enough people talk about, and that's the pirate battle at the end of the movie against Dick Wei, who, who specializes in Taekwondo and also did train Michelle Yeoh in the 80s as well. So without further ado, Max Persina, go ahead and break this fight down. Fight! I like the, pull, the string pullback. All the stuntmen are badass. They can hard falls. That's a hard one to fall. That one looked pretty good. Right there, can you stop that and show, uh, clip yes. that back a little bit? That, yeah, that hook kick looked like uh, it hit something. <laughs> <laughs> probably the guy's face not on this one but the shot behind he he probably maybe he brushed it but it's it's a good you know you can't do that stuff with actors today because you know in america you'll get they they won't insure you they won't put insurance on this type of movie they don't make movies like this anymore no yeah because yeah, everybody, in hong kong and just that little short segment, you could tell that everybody's a trained martial artist because they're swinging something and everybody's dodging and knows what they're doing to, to do that. That round kick looked like it hit, basically hit. That round kick probably basically hit. This. So again, pause. So though the so though they didn't kick hard, you can tell that they're placing their feet on people's faces and people's chest. People are yeah. there. That contact is in, in the fight scene, which gives it an overall more, not not something we see often anymore. That was a real sweet kick. That was a real small fall. So, yeah. Jackie Chan looks young, naturally. 
<laughs> that was a good hit. He pushed him right into the chair. Very nice. That was a kick too, controlled kick with contact. That was it. That's pretty good too. Enter Samo. <laughs> I like the dodging maneuvers and the way they're when they were swinging weapons. How it, the weapon is really, really close to the body. Like the the, uh, the actors are actually dodging as opposed to you know clearly missing most of the time. We just saw one where they did a rainbow, but it's okay. You know where they swung it over the head, but it's all right. When yeah, it's a little dangerous, you know. So speed up, but it's all right. Good claw. You can tell that the guy actually knows how to use uh, his uh, claw when he grabbed his throat. And we're well, going crazy. It's amazing, man, that size can move that quick. Yeah, he's agile. It's hard to do this type of, of, uh, of action scene because of the contact they're making, the stunts, everybody's falling. Everybody in there knew how to fall. You get, you get clear shots of them really, really falling hard, you know, and uh, from experience, from experience, even if the wood is floor, if it's a wooden floor, it, your body takes a toll when, getting, when doing stunts like that. So, you know, it's classic Jackie Chan. You know, big fan. It's a really good fight scene. Right side, nice classic Jackie Chan flipping over Samo Hunk for no reason, but it looked cool. I took a good hit. <laughs> this gets me every time. Yeah. Here comes the fatality. Yeah. Yep. Finish him. Fatality. Good call. That's, That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. You know, it's a classic. Uh, Master Priscina, rating one through 10, what would you give that particular fight scene? I give that particular fight scene a nine more on the actual stunt work and combat work. While Donnie Yen, his piece, the cinematography and the way they filmed it was really, really good. And that helped escalate the number. But this one, I'm just pure. The shots are really basic and it's just showing off everyone's skill. Everyone's skill, all 20 people on that set, everybody knew what they were doing. Everyone took hard falls and hard blows. So that's hard to, uh, it's, you know, you gotta give it a nine. You gotta give it a nine, show it some respect. So our next fight is chosen by popular demand. It is the hammer and bat scene from The Raid 2. Now I had to pick this one just because I absolutely just love the action and the pace of this thing. Plus just the idea of having to fight somebody with hammers is super intriguing. Fight! Again, I am a big fan of these films, you know. His skill is pretty good because he's not actually, when he's kicking these people, he's using like a lot of safety. But when they're going after him, they're going after him pretty good. See with that kick, or those two kicks, if you want to pause it a second and then rewind it, you can see how lightly he's kicking, which is a different style 
than what you saw Jackie Chan do. You know. So see how he that whip kick he did in Chinese they call the roundhouse kick a whip kick. So both of those kicks are a little lit, and then when he kicks her too, it's got a, like more of a push. But when they're actually hitting him, they're giving it a little bit more juice than uh, you know showing who has the real martial arts skill. I like the wildness of the bat and the hammer in the small corridor, in the really thin corridor. They're using the weapon really well. You know, the way they're uh, filming it is really well. Even there, if you uh, uh, turn it back a little bit to when he gets hit in the ribs, you can tell that that, it might not be a real bat, but he took, uh, basically got hit in the ribs. use of a lock Ooh, he ripped out her throat with that power by uh, hammer as a cloth so you could rip people's throat out another fatality yeah fatality it's also just insane. I mean, such a tight corridor, and they're able to move the cameras around the way they do. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it, it was well done because it's a short corridor. You can only recall a few other movies, like Gordon Liu doing one where he's fighting somebody in a short corridor. Probably hard, difficult to, to film in it, but it's really cool to see just the intensity of the fight. You know, intensity, the back swinging is really cool. Using, the, using weapons that you could easily access is really cool. I would prefer a hammer over uh, a baseball bat, personally. Need it. I think, it would be, I think <laughs> it would do more more damage with it than that. You could tell that he had good control of his martial arts skill, not hitting him that hard. Even though a couple times during the filming, you could tell that they gave him a little bit, little bit of something to remember them by. So yeah, <laughs> the, the choreography generally was really really cool. I like it. Naturally, I'm a fan. This corridor scene really started setting the trend to other movies. Other movies, you know, they did it back in the day a few movies but now lately you know like on terror devil they did something similar you know oh, almost the same and other movies have done it too this movie bought that type of action back down that corridor very very good so what would your rating be uh one to ten on this one i would rate it as a seven well done just because it was sure it was gritty but the other two showed more of both parties you know the good guy and his nemesis both knew martial arts in this particular scene the hero knows martial arts but his antagonists are more of brawlers and more, more ruthless and maybe that's why he prevailed because he has more training so you know they they prevail because they're ruthless but that doesn't amount to skill yeah that's the reason why i would still really good on the scale from one to ten seven is really really good in the upper part but yeah. again not as good as donnie Yen and definitely not as good as jackie chan that's tough competition anyway oh yeah they're legends you know even donnie Yen is, is a legend so ladies and gentlemen for the finale with master persona as the co-creator of mortal kombat he's portrayed Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Noom Sabot, Smoke, Reptile. For this last fight, it was only appropriate that we have to have him critique the very famous Sub-Zero and Scorpion fights in the new Mortal Kombat 2021 movie. So this is a real treat for everybody. So here we go. Fight! I am a fan of both actors, and I think they portrayed me well in these films. A little more gritty than Chris and Keith portrayed me in the earlier 94 movie. Do I like that right now when he has the knife in one hand and there's actually rope in the other hand? Because now they have it with a chain and really if you have a rope, a uh, knife on the end of a chain, it won't stick into you because the weight of it will make the A point upward. So there's no way it would stick. With the chain and, and a dagger at the end, that's more like chain whip or something in whipping. So classically, Dude, I like that scene that he, you know, moved out of the way easily of the rope dart because that's usually what would happen uh, if somebody just threw the rope dart at you like that. You know, when you see live performances, you'll see it wrap around the body to kind of fool a person and to get centrifugal force to, for it to come out. Yeah. 
Ooh, that had to hurt. But I think his name is Hanzo now. They, they, yeah, it grew since, uh, since I helped create it. So I think Hanzo now snuck in his blows. So he's not an easy target. I, I like the coldness of Sub Zero. You know, really torturing him, forming the ice. I don't know if we're getting punched. You got caged right, right there a little bit. You got punched in the nuts. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's gotta hurt. I, I enjoyed this because both of them are taking blows and delivering blows. They're, it's not truly one-sided. In reality, he probably wouldn't stab him like that because of the size of the knife and how deep it went, he would have stabbed himself too. So it's kind of cool, but you know, as I said, having a chain on the end of that weapon is not very uh, realistic. Or two, having ice against a live blade is probably not realistic too. They could have picked something better. I know they have that in the game, Now this one for me, when I even now when I'm re-watching it, I thought the fight is too hurried. Meaning there's, a, like the first fight had longer fight sequences and this one is chopped up a little bit more. So it feels like the movie maker was in a hurry as opposed to really showing off these guys' skill like at the beginning fight scene. Because their armor look and their costumes look really, really cool. Oh, absolutely. You know. Sub Zero is definitely the show stealer in this, you know, in this film. It, it's cool. I wish they would have used a little bit more than square fighting with their swords. You know, at the beginning, they were kind of moving moving around more than standing in one place and doing their, their fighting. You think their costumes have something to do with it? Because those are very bulky costumes. Uh, well, they got money, so they should make them easy to, to move in. But again, I think it's more they were hurried. So that turret didn't work twice, so that's cool. See, stuff like that little exchange right there, they should have had that more of us, more of them uh, throughout the movie. But since they only used it once, and then they filmed that, I don't know if I'm a keen of filming things backwards. You know what I mean? Having a guy do it forward and then rewind it and make it look yeah. like backwards. This part of the fight scene for me really didn't make any sense. Like when he jumped into fight. I'm not a big fan of Cole because he's a mediocre MMA athlete and now he beats like a deadly assassin, which doesn't even if And he has, Goro. <laughs> yeah, even if he has superpowers, these guys also have superpowers. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, that he would defeat Sub Zero when no. You know, I mean when you kinda suck, you can't all of a sudden become like, oh I'm Super powerful, unless a spider bites you. <laughs> right. You know. And the famous toasty fatality. You definitely yeah. want your take on this. It's really cool. It's really really cool. I really enjoyed that they used Rich Divizio's "Get Over Here" because he kind of coined that word. And I, I enjoyed that he took off the mask to blow the fire because when we were creating it, originally John just wanted me to blow fire, and I told him I wouldn't do it because it would light my whole head on fire. And so he was like, don't be a smart ass, pull the mask down. And then Rich Rich Divizio, the guy who played Kano was like, oh, it'd be cool if he took his mask off and he was a skeleton. And then I was like, oh, and, and he's on fire like in Ghost Rider. So right. that's why that whole thing was how, you know, a lot of these things were created like, like that. But yeah, yeah it, 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 naturally it's a, a fan-based movie. Uh, I thought that uh, the fight scenes 
the actors were pretty good, but it seemed like it's not a little. The the last one was rushed more than the first one. The first one was pretty good. Well, well to do. I liked it. Developing the characters without too much, uh, without too much martial exchange. More of like quick exchange and getting to the to the story. But the second one for me seemed a little rushed. Like they were trying in a hurry. With the other movies, there were a lot of action. Yeah. The first one they're going for story development, and the second one I just didn't know what they were going after. Yeah. Know, for me personally, yeah. because it wasn't martial arts and it wasn't like the Mortal Kombat. Even now, that story, I know they're trying to reshape it, but sometimes it's like people like Mortal Kombat because it is Mortal Kombat and it is about a tournament. You know what I mean? Right. So I know that you get other people who look at it and are like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make Mortal Kombat better." Well, right. you know, you should have been there, you know, in 1990. One, when we're pitching the game, the midway games, but the, the people from one and two are the backbones of the character. The people gave, like everybody else copies them. You make a movie, the first movie copied us. This movie copies us, you know? Right. So it's kind of, you got to give up. And two, fans like it because of what the story is. So sometimes when you make a twist, I'm always happy about that. But we're talking about the fight scene and we're talking about those particular fight sets and all, all being a martial art movie. So that's yes. what we talk about, you know, even though we have our own opinions about other things like that. Yes, so go ahead. So Master Christino, given everything that we just seen of the two Scorpion Sub-Zero fights combined, what rating would you give those fights? So I would give the, the rating maybe a four and a half. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they use the actors to their full potential or let them go to their full potential. Meaning maybe somebody was rushing it. Maybe somebody was like, oh, we got to really get this in. The storyline was a little hokey, you know, and adding that to the martial arts at the end, it was kind of just, oh, it just didn't sit with me right. First one, really good. Second one, I thought, brought it down a little bit just because it seemed like it was hurried. If you watch those actors, their other work, the martial arts are way more insane than what we saw here. I mean, this was very tame compared to their other work. Even the guy who portrayed Scorpion, you know, when he had the fight scene in the Marvel movie against Hawkeye, that fight was pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we could see that he can do well. And here it was like they didn't let him kind of shine. And maybe they wanted to get more of the acting out. But, you know, right. Mortal Kombat is about martial arts and it is about the tournament. You know, and so that uh, they kind of have, and to kill, you know, Sub Zero before the tournament is kind of like I don't know which way they're going because maybe the fans, you know, you can see what the fans say is kill them off in the tournament. Don't kill them off before they get to the tournament. Or <laughs> if, are they going to a tournament? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. That was my that was my main complaint. complaint. As far as the Scorpion Tosi fatality, what would you give that rating? I would give the give over here an eight. Get over here! Jackie Chan got a nine. There's a couple of fight scenes that I would maybe give a 10 to, but nine yeah. is about as high as it's gonna go. And you know, I, I, eight for the get over here, another eight toasty. for, yeah, when he did his toasty. You know, yes. that's really well done. Two, I like when he, he did the sword, because again, Sub-Zero has that sword, they gave him that right. sword. So when he did this, it was really, shot well so it was, th those parts were really cool master Marcia, thank you so much for your martial arts knowledge your time i mean that's the most valuable thing that we have on this earth is time and of course i just want to say again thank you for all your positivity okay. i try to walk the same path as you because you're so you're positive you're such a great influence on me so i thank you for that every day no thank you for giving me the time to hang out with you guys man i missed you guys you know Oh, we missed we miss you too. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's great to hang out with you guys. You know, people listening out, out out there, Jay and Mark, you guys really are part of the thing that held us together and made us get through this pandemic. You know, because a lot of a lot of people, you know, are like before they underestimated podcasters and things like that. And we might have a we might have a chat like that, uh, like this before. But man, it's so it's so important to tune in and to to see people, and much, even though it's over the you know, the internet to kind of keep us, have some normalcy in our life. So, you know, you, know, you guys are the are held us together over these uh, two years and it's awesome hanging out with you guys again and let's do it again. 
Yes. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for saying yeah. that. So to Nerd Cage Nation, please let us know what you think of these fights. What fights would you like to have Master Priscilla come do? What other martial artists would you like us to bring in to do fight critiques with us? Master Priscilla, do you have a message for Nerd Cage Nation and the Mortal Kombat fans or anything else you want to promote? Yeah, yeah. Most importantly, remember we're all geeks. We all should support each other. It's a strange time. Politically, people are drawn in different directions. But in the end, you know, you look at the person and realize that we share more things in common that we like than dislike. So, you know, have a soft heart. Uh, sometimes, you know, just turn a deaf ear, shake your head, and don't get into the, the argument. Because when all this stuff is done in a few years, five or six years, you know, we're going to look back and we're going to miss the friends that we had little arguments with. You know, so don't even go there, man. Life is too short. You know, enjoy each other. Don't, don't argue too much. People are setting their ways, you know. I I am setting my ways. I will not eat pineapple on a pizza. So, <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way you can change my mind. So, you know, I also am setting my ways. So when other people, oh, I was are, gonna say you're you're in Chicago, so you you're a pizza connoisseur. So, <laughs> for, be forgiving to people, you know. Re and two, reach out uh, uh, to me, Anna. I'm Master Piscina, and uh, Master Piscina, you know, I'll try to, if you message me, I'll get to it sooner or later, just because I'm bad with social media. I still, you know, enjoy uh, more training live than, than jumping on social media. But, you know, you guys could always, you know, the fans out there could always hit me up with a question, you know, what do I like on my pizza or anything like that. Links in the description, people. So that being said, we please ask you to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and spread this shit like Shao Kahn's <laughs> empire. So you are safe from Syracuse, New York, Louisville, Kentucky, and Chicago, Illinois, to so all of our friends and fans around the world at Nerd Cage Live and Master Piscina Martial Arts. As always, enjoy life, stay safe, and good night. Say good night. Ooh, trying to get out of the Nerd Cage, are ya? Well, before you go, hit that subscribe button. And if you're really intrigued, ring that bell. Thank you for dropping by. Until next time, tell everyone you know about Nerd Cage Live! Ah!